I just want to say I'm excited to be here in Dublin, Ireland at this year's Inspire Fest. So I wanted to give a thank you to Miss Ann, the CEO of Inspire Fest, and Mr. Ian for working so hard to get me here. First, I wanted to recognize and thank some STEM women, such as Sally Ride, Dr. Mae Jemison, Katherine Johnson, Annie Easley, Yvonne Cagle, and the many other women and women of color who are no longer hidden figures, but true warriors of STEM. I am standing on the, I'm standing on the shoulders of these ladies, and I am truly hum humble. If someone would have told me seven years ago that one day I would be in Dublin, Ireland at an event called Inspire Fest, an international festival of technology, science, design, and the arts, and would actually be a speaker for it, I would have never believed it. But here I am, and what I know is, that, well, no, what I know is that I will be a scientist, an astronaut, and an engineer. I know that everything that has happened to me in the past not only makes me present hopeful and bright, but will also have my future reaching straight to Mars and beyond. So being here right now at this moment in my history is just unbelievable. Now what most of you have read in my bio is who I am today, an advocate, activist, and philanthropist, a girl whose dream is to go to Mars. Inspiration behind Lottie Dahl's Astro Adventure spacesuit that lets boys and girls know how to be bold, be brave, and be you. Some have even called me an agent of STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. What most of you may not know are the, some of the obstacles that I had to go through to get me here. As a younger kid, I wasn't a strong reader. My poor reading skills meant that I had to be retained in second grade, but my mom didn't give up on me. She ensured that I had books in our home and to read to me daily until I could confidently read on my own and to become one of the top readers in my elementary class. Now imagine a kid who doesn't have books in their home. I did, and that inspired me to help other kids who didn't have books to help get them. So I started a book club and drive called Taylor's Take Flight with a Book, where kids could have home libraries and books to take flight towards their own dreams and aspirations. To date, I have read over 500 kids in my city, and in addition, I've collected and donated over 8,000 STEM books to kids all over the U.S. to ensure kids have home libraries and to promote STEM literacy. And while many know of my successful fundraisers, what many don't know is that I'm a product of a single parent who does not make much money. So when I decided at the age of nine to go to space camp after reading my idol, Dr. Mae Jemison's book, who is also the first African-American female astronaut to go into space, I knew my mom couldn't afford it. So I asked to do a GoFundMe campaign to help me. I was shocked that not only did I raise the funds, but exceeded it. Thanks to the kindness of strangers who wanted to help me accomplish my dream. So I went off to space camp and of course had a blast. For the record, that was my first campaign and wouldn't be my last. After attending space camp and being the only African American at camp, I knew that representation truly mattered. And somehow, something, some way needed to be done. But what? I was only a kid. Well, I figured since my first campaign was so successful, I would do others to help everyone else's dream come true, which I did. So fast forward to five years later to where my Go GoFundMe campaigns have raised over $150,000 for STEM initiatives that have included space camp scholarships, donations to other STEM focused programs, and more STEM books for kids, nonprofit organizations, even local and children hospitals, and yes, STEM-inspired movie screenings that have sent over 8,000 kids to see, a hidden, to see hidden figures and most recently, Ava DuVernay at Disney's Wrinkle in Time. The success of campaigns ended up inspiring screenings in 80 cities and 30 states for both movies. And I'm not stopping there. My current campaign is hashtag Wrinkle in Time in Ghana, will allow me for the next month to continue my STEM advocacy in Africa to do a movie screening of A Wrinkle in Time and bring many other educational resources to 17 girls in a local orphanage. And I've been incredibly lucky so far to receive donations for some pretty cool and inspiring people, like movie producer J.J. Abrams and his wife Katie McGrath, and actor Chris Pine, and of course, mogul herself, Oprah Winfrey, who I got the opportunity to meet in person on Good Morning America. My hopes for this and all the work I do is to empower, engage, and inspire girls who don't look like me and who look like me to dream STEM big. For me, A Wrinkle in Time is very important because for the first time, there's a black, black girl protagonist in a science fiction film. For the young heart and the young mind to see, I was very shocked to see that. I want all girls, especially the girls in Ghana, to see and read about hashtag black girl magic because representation matters. All kids should have equal opportunities in their education and by having books. Each of the girls will be inspired to be warriors and never give up on their dreams, even when it seems impossible. These dreams are often fueled by the same inclusion and representation many of us sadly are never alluded, which is another reason why films like Hidden Figures and A Wrinkle in Time are so important. 
Girls, especially black girls, deserve to believe they can do calculations and send astronauts to the moon. Girls deserve to believe that they can save the world like Meg and go on wild adventures and accomplish the impossible and be, wo be warriors. I want girls to know that, not, that they can not only touch the stars, but they are already their own special and unique star. So with all that said, let me reintroduce myself. My name is Taylor Richardson. I am also known as Astronaut Star Bright. I am a product of a single parent home, and on top of that, I've started by being bullied for my skin color, wanting to be an astronaut, and diagnosed with ADHD, which I call abundantly different and happily divine. Because <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Because I am and we all are. I am not only changing I am not only changing the STEM game, but the face of STEM. And while others may only hear and think of my failures and flaws that I know have encountered, which by the way, girls, it is okay to fall as long as you get back up. But I have learned no one is perfect. So for me, flaws and failures are just my testimonies and what has gotten me to this very stage standing in front of you today. You see, I am not just a girl who rocks STEM, but I am a black girl who rocks it. And I'm bringing girls who look like me and girls who don't to this table we call STEM. Because all representation matters and it's time we reclaim our STEM. Because our voice and our worth matters. I want girls to know to value yourself, your name, your voice, your time, because they all matter and never compromise it. Don't let anyone tell you you can accomplish your dreams. Our possibilities are limitless and it is who we are inside that makes the difference and that what makes us so special. So I say those who try to limit us and doubt our abilities, don't dare, don't doubt us. Don't doubt us, but dare us and soar. Yes, girls soar to be the scientist, the engineer, that congresswoman, and yes, even the president. I plan to soar right to Mars because one day I will be one of the first to walk on its planet. And like in the movies, Hidden Figures and A Wrinkle in Time, girls, if we can dream it, we are already there. And boys there, more of us. So support us, join us, coach us, but most importantly, sponsor and invest in us. The future is female. We all have a responsibility to ensure equality across all boards. And I believe that if there are barriers, then those barriers must be broken. And we as girls and women can no longer wait and ask for a seat at the table. So let's build stronger tables and chairs that will be financially secure, diverse, and most importantly, inclusive. So I've said it here before and we'll say it here again. You better get used to us girls and women because we are not going anywhere. Women like Arlen Hamilton, Anna O'Day, Ava DuVernay, Elena Rossini, Girls like my STEM sisters, Savannah Wright, Havana Edwards, Allie Weaver, Erica Wagner, and Julie Sage, and many others whose names you should not only know, but support. They are game changers and agents of STEM and equality. The time for breaking down barriers of gender and racial equality is long overdue. For it's the right thing to do and definitely time. So what's next? Well, before I make those first steps on Mars, I'm continuing my education until there is not a need for hashtag representation matters. I will continue to do my part to advocate for girls in STEM whether it be through a book drive, a space camp scholarship, or showing of STEM-inspired movie screenings, or maybe even starting my own foundation. I will continue my work and work hard. Who knows, maybe someday I will inspire a speech or someone in this crowd today that will invest in girls and continue to invest in themselves. In closing, I will leave you with words of inspiration by my idol, Oprah Winfrey, who said, your, leg your legacy is not what, but who. I will ask you, who will your legacy be for? What will you stand for? I stand for representation and equality. Let's not only break barriers, but eliminate them for a better world, not only in STEM, but for humankind. Let us here today go back to our own communities and be our sisters to brothers keepers. I know we as youth and as women are here and we are ready, but the real question is, are you? Thank you.